dear students a warm welcome to my lecture my today's lecture is on oceanography which is a branch of physical geography the outline of my lecture is what is oceanography definitions of oceanography branches of oceanography the learning objectives are students will be able to explain meaning of oceanography understand the definitions of oceanography and identify the branches of oceanography oceanography is the study of physical chemical and biological features of the ocean including the ocean's ancient history its current condition and its future in a time when the ocean is threatened by climate change and global warming and also because of pollution coastlines are eroding and entire species of marine life are at risk of extinction the role of oceanographers may be more important now than it has been in the past oceanography as is already identified as a branch of physical geography it studies about oceans and their ecosystem oceanography applies chemistry geology meteorology biology and other branches of science study the oceans it is especially important today as climate change pollution and other factors are threatening the ocean and its marine life one of the definitions of uh, oceanography is it is the study of ocean embracing and threatening all knowledge pertaining to the ocean's physical boundaries the chemistry and physics of sea water and marine biology another definition of oceanography is it is the study of the deep sea and shallow coastal oceans their biology chemistry geology and physics together make oceanography a richly interdisciplinary science let's understand why oceanography is important it's important mainly because oceans supply water vapor for rains if there are no oceans there won't be rain because in the process of hydrological cycle or water cycle oceans play an important role oceans connect continents and islands so there are many islands there are many continents so they are connected by the oceans they provide large number of deposits mineral deposits are found in the oceans and some of the minerals found in the oceans are supposed to be the very very rare ones apart from that the oceans have captured huge amount of carbon dioxide so as a result of this oceanography is a very important branch of physical geography which needs to be studied in the entire subject matter of oceanography can be divided into four branches the physical oceanography chemical oceanography geological oceanography and biological each one of these branches study independent component of oceanography there are some important concepts that needs to be studied under oceanography those includes configuration of ocean floor a uh, ocean floor is made up of continental shelf continental slope the trenches the abyssal plains the ponds etc so that makes configuration of ocean floor similarly sea waves sea waves occur due to various reasons one of the important reasons why sea waves occur is because of the winds and also because of some disturbance in the ocean salinity the content of salt in the sea water varies from place to place oceanography tries to understand why the content of salt varies from one ocean to another ocean similarly water also has got some te certain temperature oceanography makes an in depth analysis of the temperature similarly the density of water is not same everywhere generally the density of water is one so the density of sea water is 
0.02 meaning the water of sea is denser than the normal water not only that the density of sea water depends on the salinity higher the salinity higher is going to be the density of water lower the salinity lower is going to be of water meaning similarly next important concept that is studied in the oceanography is the tides so tide is nothing but regular rise and fall of sea water there are two tides high tide and low tide so this concept is studied in detail in the oceanography similarly the water in the oceans moves like streams and it's called as ocean currents so ocean currents play an important role in controlling the climate of a given area we are in the age of climate change and global warming the oceans are directly and indirectly are connected with climate change and global warming sea level rise is one of the problem that all of us are facing if sea level rises so imagine what will happen to the world the oceans have got some of the beautiful islands the most beautiful islands are the coral islands they are called as the coral reef so these are very important concepts that we study under oceanography now to understand more about what is oceanography what are the processes involved in ocean let's listen to some expert planet earth is known as a water planet it is because 71% of the earth is covered by water and 29% is covered by land but if we take the entire water and convert it into a bubble it would be just 1385 kilometers in diameter and it would be very small when it is compared to planet earth the land surface on the earth can be further divided into mountains plateaus and plains when we come to the coastal regions these plains extend in the form of ocean floors the ocean floors can be divided into four major divisions they are the continental shelf the continental slope the deep sea plains the oceanic deeps besides these divisions there are also major and minor relief features in the ocean floor like the ridges hills sea mounts gyots trenches canyons etc the continental shelf is an underwater landmass which extends from a continent resulting in an area of relatively shallow water known as a shelf sea the depth of the shelves may be as shallow as 30 meters in some areas while in some areas it is as deep as 600 meters it occupies the shallow seas and gulfs lying adjacent to continent it is the shallowest part of the ocean showing an average gradient that is slope of 1 degree or even less the shelf typically ends at a very steep slope called the shelf break the width of the continental shelves vary from one ocean to another the average width is about 80 kilometers now the shelves are almost absent or very narrow along some of the margins like the coast of chile the west coast of sumatra etc on the contrary the siberian shelf in the arctic ocean is the largest in the world it stretches to 1500 kilometers in width the south china sea lies over another extensive area of the continental shelf then the sunda shelf which joins borneo sumatra and java to the asian mainland the other familiar bodies of water that overlie continental shelves are the north sea and the persian gulf coming to next division and that is the continental slope the continental slope connects the continental shelf and the ocean basin it begins where the bottom of the continental shelf sharply drops off 
at a steep slope. The depth of the slope region varies between 200 and 3000 meters. The slope boundary indicates the end of the continent. Then comes the deep sea plains. These are gently sloping areas of the ocean basin. These are the flattest and the smoothest regions of the world. The depth varies between 3000 and 6000 meters. These plains are covered with fine grained sediments like clay and silt. Canyons and trenches are observed in these regions and this region is known as the abyss. Let us come back to the coastal region. This is the littoral zone. The littoral zone is the part of a sea, lake or river that is close to the shore and it extends from the high water mark which is rarely inundated to shoreline areas that are permanently submerged. A high water mark is a point that represents the maximum rise of a body of water over land. In oceanography and marine biology, the idea of the littoral zone is extended roughly to the edge of the continental shelf. Starting from the shoreline, the littoral zone begins at the spray region just above the high tide mark. From here, it moves to the intertidal region between the high and low water marks and then out as far as the edge of the continental shelf. Now, these three sub-regions are called in order the, the supralittoral zone, the eulittoral zone and the sublittoral zone. The supralittoral zone is the area above the spring high tide line that is regularly splashed but not submerged by ocean water. The eulittoral zone is the intertidal zone also known as the foreshore. It extends from the spring high tide line which is rarely inundated to the spring low tide line which is rarely not inundated. The sublittoral zone starts immediately below the eulittoral zone. This zone is permanently covered with seawater and it is approximately equivalent to the neritic zone. The neritic zone is the relatively shallow part of the ocean above the drop off of the continental shelf, approximately 200 meters in depth. From the point of view of marine biology, it forms a relatively stable and well illuminated environment for marine life from planktons up to large fish and corals. While physical oceanography sees it as where the oceanic system interacts with the coast. The part of the open sea or ocean that is not near the coast or sea floor is known as the pelagic zone. So, the pelagic zone consists of the water column of open ocean. Depending on how deep the sea is, the pelagic zone can be extended over up to five horizontal regions in the ocean and these are first one the epipelagic zone. It extends from the surface to 200 meters. It is the uppermost part of the oceanic zone that receives enough sunlight to allow photosynthesis. So, it is also known as the sunlight zone. With the light comes the heat and this heat is responsible for the wide range of temperatures that occur in this zone. Then it is mesopelagic zone. Below the epipelagic zone is the mesopelagic zone extending from 200 meters to 1000 meters. It is also referred to as the twilight zone or the midwater zone. The mesopelagic zone receives very little sunlight and is the home to many bioluminescent organisms. Then comes bethypelagic zone, sometimes referred to as the midnight zone or the dark zone. It extends from 1000 meters down to 4000 meters. Here, the only visible light is that produced by the creatures themselves. The water pressure at this depth 
is immense, reaching 5,850 pounds per square inch. In spite of the pressure, a surprisingly large number of creatures can be found here. Most of the animals that live at these depths are black or red in color due to the lack of light. Then it is abyssopelagic zone that is from around 4000 meters down to above the ocean floor. The name is derived from Greek meaning bottomless. Very few creatures live in the cold temperatures, high pressure and complete darkness of the steppe. Among the species found in this zone are several species of squid that is echinoderms including the basket star, swimming cucumber and the sea pig and marine arthropods including the sea spider. Many of the species living at these depths are transparent and eyeless because of the total lack of light in this zone. The next one is the oceanic deeps or trenches. In the abyssal plain at the base of the continental slope there are oceanic deeps or trenches. These are the deepest part of the oceans. They are some 3 to 5 kilometers deeper than the surrounding ocean floor. They are associated with active volcanoes and strong earthquakes. That is why they are very significant to the study of plate movements. As many as 57 deeps have been explored so far out of which 32 are in Pacific Ocean, 19 in the Atlantic Ocean and 6 in the Indian Ocean. The name of some of the important trenches are one is Peru Chile Trench, Middle America Trench, Aleutian Trench, Kurili Trench, Japan Trench, Izu Ogasawara Trench, Mariana Trench, Challenger Trench, Bauga Invili Trench, Tonga Trench, Karmadak Trench. Then it is Philippines Trench. In the Indian Ocean it is Java or the Sunda Trench. In Atlantic Ocean it is Puerto Rico Trench and the South Sandwich Trench. These are some of the important trenches. Now the deep water in ocean trenches come under the Hadal zone. The name comes from heads the classical Greek underworld. Very little is known about this zone and very few species live in the open areas but many organisms live in, live in hydrothermal vents. A hydrothermal vent is an opening in the surface of the earth. There are gases that rise through it and which heat the water around it. There are many such vents on earth. If they are on land, they are usually hot springs, geysers or fumarolos. It refers to an opening in the earth crust, often in the neighborhood of volcanoes where steam and gases come out. For instance, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrochloric acid and hydrogen sulfide. Many Asia that is single celled organisms and bacteria live under hydrothermal vents which are underwater. They support giant tube worms, clams and shrimps and many other eukaryotes. Now a eukaryote is an organism with complex cells or a single cell with complex structures.